It's Tuesday, December 7, and this is your Barbados Today News Update, so glad you could join us. One of Barbados's most successful businesses, the Simpson Motors Group, is teaming up with an international automotive distributor to embark on a new path. On Monday, founder of Simpson Motors, Sir Kevin Simpson, announced the merger of the well-known local dealership, its regional automotive distribution arm ITC, and British multinational auto company Inchgate. Describing the venture as a business combination, Sir Kiffin said the move was critical to what he termed the next chapter. Leading local economist Jeremy Stevens has been weighing in on the move. The Simpson brand is a very significant brand that stretches all the way to Latin America and the southern part of North America. So, you know, both might be very formidable, um, both might be similarly, uh, let me say, valued. Prime Minister Mia Motley has been named a United Nations Environment Programme 2021 Champion of the Earth. It's the UN's highest environmental honour. UNEP said the Barbadian leader honoured in the policy leadership category for her powerful voice for a sustainable world from the global south consistently raises the alarm about the vulnerability of small island development states due to the climate emergency. Prime Minister Motley was one of four champions of the earth who got the award this year for their transformative impact on the environment. The National Vending Bill got the nod of the island senators on Monday. During the debate in the upper chamber, Deputy President of the Senate, Senator Rudolph Grinnell, said it was a travesty that hundreds of black working class people who were unjustly criminalized for vending are only now having their records cleared. It is a pity that the amendment did not come at a time when the majority of those who were the victims would have been alive, those who were so embarrassed. It's a pity that we'll wait till poor granny has gone to her grave to tell me now it is expunged. It's a travesty. Because right thinking Barbarians, sir, now know that there is value to each and every honest job. Independent Senator Julia Hunt wants vendors to embrace e-commerce. Speaking in the upper chamber in support of the National Vending Bill 2021, Hunt contended that this would augur well for the advancement of the sector, traditionally referred to as the informal economy. I would like to see, as I have seen and experienced in parts of Africa and parts of Europe, where you can go to a vendor and the vendor equipped with some attachment on their phone uh, facilitate electronic payment. It makes them less of a target for being robbed. It sets up a record that the banks can see that here is a business person, here is some, here is some tangible evidence of their income. It puts the vendor in a position where they can access credit and they can be thinking on a scale larger than the scale which they uh, most likely have been thinking on up to this point. He added that vendors ought to be encouraged to plan ahead by contributing to the National Insurance Scheme for their retirement. I do not like to see that people who have been vendors they reach a certain age and then they have to depend on the munificence of government for a non-contributory pension. I do not know, frankly, if there will be such a thing in the future as a non-contributory pension. But I think that effort should be made to incorporate those who vend into the social security network. Meanwhile, Senator Lisa Cummins made a case for vending zones. She said there are significant opportunities for vendors in the tourism sector. And it would be such a phenomenal thing, Mr. President, where visitors to our country, Barbadians alike, are able to go all across the country. And in the same way that if I want to go and find pottery, I can go to the Scotland district. If I want to go and find fish, I can go down to the West Coast. I can go down to Oystens. If I want to find craft, I can go to Pelican Village. All across the country, I would love to be able to see tourism vending sites being developed that are driven by local communities and local vendors 
offering designated local products made in Barbados, manufactured in Barbados as well, mm -hmm. and exported from Barbados both directly and via tra tra uh, visitors who are traveling out of the country. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news now, Guyana is poised for substantial developments in its oil and gas sector over the next few years, and by 2025, the cash flow of total investments is expected to reach 3.5 billion US dollars. The petroleum sector. To date, the rate of success is roughly 80%, with 26 commercial discoveries. By 2025, the operating cash flow of total investment is expected to reach 3.5 billion. These discoveries are highly resilient, with approximately 10% return at $35 per barrel. The first well, Lisa One, has achieved nameplate capacity. Lisa Phase Two is on schedule for startup in 2022. The second FPSO has already arrived. Overall, six drill ships are operating offshore Guyana. Presently, our oil production is roughly 100,000 barrels per day. On the international front in Indonesia, search and rescue efforts following the eruption of the Semeru volcano have been suspended as a result of poor weather. Al Jazeera Television is tracking this story. Scouring through the rubble, plowing through volcanic debris that has now begun to harden, the hope that these rescue workers might find survivors is diminishing by the hour. Even for the lifeless bodies recovered beneath the rubble, a sense of relief among emergency crews. Thank God we found the bodies of these victims and retrieved them. Answers for loved ones in this moment are better than no news. Those who survived are still coming to terms with their ordeal. At first, I thought it was a bomb explosion and all of a sudden it was Semero erupting and spewing volcanic ashes. Suddenly it was all dark, like it was going to destroy the earth. My children were scattered around, my husband was not found, and I was waiting for him and then we fled to the evacuation camp. Java's largest volcano unleashed a thunderous plume of ash high into the sky on Saturday, raining down on thousands of panicked people below and swallowing up entire communities in its path. Mount Samiru spewed more ash on Monday, forcing rescue teams to retreat in their search for survivors. Waterways around the volcano polluted with ash, now appearing as streams of dark sludge. And with more rain on the forecast, there's a chance a new river of hot lava could spew, further affecting rescue operations. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.